Welcome, today is day 15 of Advent of Code. Yesterday was much better than the previous three days, as you can see. Um, at least on part two, part one was a little bit slow. Um, I'm hoping for a, another question that I can solve quickly. Hoping to get back in the top 1,000 again. Um, and also hoping to make up some time on my uh, friends in the in the private leaderboard here. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm only three back of Easton, so if I do well today, that's definitely possible to get up into the top three again. Um, it'd have to be a huge, and you know, I can I can maybe gain on Colin if I do well, or I'll really just. It'll be terrible, and none of that is going to actually happen. So, um, there's not much as far as updates. I did add type annotations to all of my functions in the um, in my starter code, which is becoming very extensive now. It's what now almost a hundred and a hundred. And 80 lines is just of, of random uh, utilities. Um, I also did implement Dijkstra's just in case I need that today. So I don't think it's a, a very efficient implementation of Dijkstra's, but it'll work. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully having those type annotations helps a bit. I'm trying to go with a little bit less frantic every single day like getting it right and understanding the problem is is the key here uh, less so than you know being super fast um, so we'll see how that goes yeah so so we're going with the Joshua wise uh, um, philosophy that that um, slow is smooth and smooth is fast um, and I, I really have to do that for part two because that's that's where I lose the most ground normally. So, um, yeah, because I mean, if we look at if we look at leaderboard, you know, there's been a lot of days where I've had okay starts, you know, gold, bronze, silver, but I haven't been able to follow them up with anything good. So, <sighs> yeah. So I don't know where this map is going. Maybe it's looping back around. That'd be kind of fun. I don't know.
Whoops. Yeah, it is. Oh well, um, I didn't really, I haven't really talked any yet. Um, so sorry for no audio. Welcome into stream, everyone. So, okay, let's see here. Nice job, McPanda. This was pretty bad. That's gonna hurt me. Cause I, so Colin is plus two on that, but I think he's, what, what did, when did he just solve? I'm only plus one on him for part two. So I still managed to lose points. Yeah, my, my part one score was just trash. Okay, so this was kind of an annoying problem to be perfectly honest. Like the only thing that you had to change was like two, that I had to change was two things for part two, which is like really annoying. Like I would have liked a more complicated thing for sure. Um, I mean, I'm sure that if maybe, I mean, this is pretty slow, but it, it, it executes in, it executes quick enough that I didn't bother optimizing it, you know? Um, okay, so what's going on here? Um, first of all, let's just extract this out here. Um, yeah, I just took way too long figuring out what it was asking. So this didn't really make much sense to me. And like, I had to read the example like multiple times just to understand what it was going on. Um, so anyway, once I got that, it was smooth sailing. Um, yeah, my runtime... for both parts is pretty atrocious. Um, we'll see if we can optimize it. I have some ideas, but... <laughs> 11 seconds. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I'm not sure I really... This, this problem was like, okay, I mean, it was just too confusing. But I, I've said that about most problems, so I, I don't know. Um, okay, so let's, let's discuss what is going on. Um, so let's do that. Let me just do a bit of cleanup here. Um, so this bit me in the butt <laughs> for getting, for getting to update this number here. Um, okay. So effectively we have this sequence of numbers. Um, they're all comma separated. So that's pretty easy to deal with. And this is our seed. This is the seed. Um, so the first, not, uh, we, uh, you know, on the first turn, we speak whatever the first thing in the seed is up, you know, second turn, we speak whatever the second thing is, etc. until we've run out of the seed or starting numbers. Then we have to consider the last number spoken. Um, so this is a six. And we basically have to keep track of how many times we've said this number and when we've said it. So this was the first four, turn four was the first time that we, we spoke the number. So we're just gonna do, we're just gonna print zero in this case. We're gonna say, say zero, since there's, there's not been another time since six has been said. The next turn, um, we speak zero, so, we, we look back one turn, we see that it's a zero. It has been spoken before. It's been spoken on turn four and on turn one. So then we just say the difference between the turns. So four minus zero. Um, and really 
if you zero index this, this would be index three and zero, which works too, which is what I ended up doing. Um, and then you just continue doing that, applying those rules. Uh, three has been spoken before on turn two and on turn five. So, so you get another three, then you get a one, then it just kind of keeps going like this. So those are the rules. Um, if I didn't suck at this, I would have understood the rules, you know, 30 seconds, a minute earlier, whatever. I just don't, I, it was just, I don't know. It was kind of annoying to be perfectly honest. And then part two is literally the exact same thing, except for you change 2020 to 300, what is this? 30, 30 million. So <clears throat> how do we actually implement this? Um, I think I'm going to refactor this and extract it out because there's, there's really only one thing that changes. Um, and before I do that, let me just clean up a... Uh, like literally none of the starter code mattered. Um, so we'll just get rid of that and we will define a function that is literally just part one, except for it takes in an input and which is an int and, and then we will do solve 2020 and then we'll solve with 330 million here okay so the key is the solve function i so i'm going to explain what i did then i'm going to go back and try and op optimize it a little bit i have a couple ideas so okay Basically what we're doing is we're, we're keeping track of all the times that we speak every single number. And we're using this default dict. Default dicts are great. Basically they, if you index into them with, an, with something that hasn't been indexed in with before, then it's just going to give you whatever this constructor is. So in this case, it'll be a list. Um, so this avoids having to do stuff like if it exists, then add. Um, so um, this is pretty inefficient. Like we'd only ever need the last two, but it works. So, you know, there's that. So then um, we're just initializing a variable previous and s. These are just, these won't actually ever be used. They're just here to make my linter happy. And then um, we're iterating through all of the numbers up to n. Uh, so in the case of part one, that's, that's 2020. In the case of part two, that's 30 million. Um, let's do that for clarity. Uh, hey, hey, Joshua, welcome in. I actually did OK today, 1055 and 464. Um, so not a, not a terrible day um, by by any means, still, my, my all my friends are too good, so I, I can't I can't even gain on them, you know. Um, part one was pretty atrocious, to be perfectly honest. Um, it just took me too long to understand what the problem was saying. Um, so, the basic idea here, back to the explanation, the basic idea is that uh, if we have seen this uh, number either zero times. Oh, no, okay, so th basically, so this if statement seeds our, our spoken's dictionary effectively um, with the, the necessary uh, values for the seed. Um, and, you know, arguably this is kind of a, I don't know, I think it's actually a decent way of doing it. Um, I could do this outside of the for loop as well, but then that would have re required more thinking, which is not something that you can do on these problems that take very little time. So anyway, this is just seeding 
basically this S number is, is what gets put into the uh, um, into this set or into this dictionary, what we use to index into the dictionary. Um, so like say it's a, uh, you know, say the number is one, right? We go in here and then we append the, the index to the list. Like I said, this is super inefficient because there's no need to store all of the numbers, but it works and it's fast enough. <laughs> Takes 11 seconds to run, but that's fine. It's 11 seconds that uh, in which I would not have been able to figure out an optimization for this. So if we aren't in the seed, then we go to this else case. And there's two cases that we have to care about. First of all, if we've seen it zero or one times. And in this case, we just do S is zero always. You can kind of see this here, right? Like it was the first time it has been spoken. So, so it's, it's a zero. Oh, and uh, the other thing is we need this trailing trailing previous um, number, right? To, to keep track of the previous um, spoken number. Because uh, you have to look back one iteration effectively. And then uh, reset it down here. Every loop. So that's the easy case. Like, we just set it to zero. Uh, all the other cases, we say the last time that it was said minus the last next to last time it was set. Um, Python is nice because you can do negative index indexing. This gives you the last element of the list. This gives you the next to last element of the list. So this is, I think, a fairly clean way of doing it. Um, fairly obvious what's going on. Um, yeah, and then we always append whatever we spoke here. And then at the very end, the last thing that we spoke that's going to be what we return. That's all it is. Um, just telling, saying the 2020th number spoken or the 300 or 30 millionth number spoken. Um, so yeah, the, the big mistake that I made was that I initially had an, this inside of the for loop. I had like if i equals 2020 minus 1 um, return return s, um, and then on part two, I forgot to update it to 30 million. Um, so I lost, I lost a good 30 seconds at least, because I had to go back and debug, and then, um, I mean, it should have been a total giveaway that it was literally the same answer for part one. So yeah, I was just kind of stupid. Okay, so, Let's see, how can we, what optimization can we make here? Um, is there a, oh, um, well, limited size list or something? Like, cause I don't wanna, I don't wanna like reassign it. That seems inefficient as well. Maybe a Q actually. Well, the nice thing about a Q is that it'll, uh, well, it'll be slow to index. Let's um, let's see here. Maybe let's just store a Let's do this. Um, that's not going to work if spokens of this is not initialized.
Oh, that's good. There we go. So that works. Um, it's just as slow though, so. I have uh, never coached competitor programming. I am nowhere. Yeah, this is way way slower. So that's 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 not good. Um, no, I would uh, I would be very very bad at um, coaching competitive programming. I do know some people who are really good at it though at um, my alma mater, but I am not one of those. Um, Honestly, I have no idea how you actually prepare for one of these things. Like my, um, so, so Joshua was wondering if I was ever a, um, coach to competitive programming or have done this seriously. And the answer is absolutely not. Um, I, I did do like ICPC when I was in, in college and, you know, my way of preparing for those was to not prepare at all and just, you know no algorithms and like data structures and remember that stuff, but then just like wing it. Um, for example, and, and it, it served me pretty well. We, uh, the last year that I did it, we came second in the, in the region or second on site. And then what, what did we get regionally fourth, I guess. So it was pretty, it was pretty good. Yeah, honestly, so McPanda is in chat is saying that he wants to learn better programming, but um, doesn't really want to switch languages from JavaScript. I get it. Like, honestly, I will say, like, I don't know. Python really isn't the language to do competitive programming in either. It's too slow. Like, the people who are really good at competitive programming, they, they, they use C or C++. And then they have like this entire macro library that basically at the beginning of a competition, they will type out, you know, they'll have one person who's just amazing at, at, at typing and then they'll just like pfft, type out the entire starter code. And then it's, they're effectively programming in a DSL. Um, I'm, I never wanted to get that serious with competitive programming. That just sounds like too much work. I would rather just be using, using Python implementing them um with you know kind of just my knowledge you know not not trying to like um cheese it i, I don't know i don't it's not really cheesing you know they're, they're very smart don't get me wrong but at some point i would rather just engineer my way out of programming problems rather than do like five thousand leak code problems and do every single problem from the past five years of ICPC, right? Like that doesn't sound like any fun to me. So um, anyway, to answer, that's a long winded answer to, I'm nowhere close to serious about competitive programming. Joshua Wise, I actually do use PyPy. So my run script, um, uh, let me pull it up here. So my run script is just a watch exec that uses, uh, that runs PyPy3 on whatever the day is and passing in the uh, the input. So so this is actually, I realized that I was, <laughs> I realized that I was um, uh, using Python on day like eight or nine, 10, something, somewhere around there. And it was like, one of them was a bit slow. And then I, I ran it with PyPy and it was like way, way faster. Um, so, yeah, I, I actually, let's see, um, for, for people in the future, let's see what happens if I run this. Um, so this is with PyPy. Um, oh, I need to time it. We'll, we'll run it with PyPy and then we'll run it with not PyPy and see how slow it is. Um, it's already super slow as is. Um, So this is without it. 15.py inputs 
15.txt. So we're going to probably be waiting for a while. Um, PyPy is amazing at optimizing very, very tight loops, which is, which is what this is. Um, so this is going to be super slow. Yeah, I think as far as being good with speed, reading helps, which is my weakest point, I guess. I don't know. I just today especially was kind of annoying for me. I, I'm not sure if how, how you guys felt about it, but like this whole description, like I read it. I actually read it, but I, I didn't like I, I didn't understand it at all. Um, it didn't make any sense. So I just had to stare at this example for five minutes or more. It was kind of pathetic. But, you know, once I got it, then part two came very quickly. Um, yeah, uh, okay, so, oh crap, I forgot to time it. Wow, okay, okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how long it takes. I, I don't know what it was about the description that didn't make sense. Both Joshua and McPanda in the, in the chat are saying that, that it was fine for them, so... I guess I guess I'm just bad at this. Um, but we we've kind of already established that fact. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm really happy with how I ended up with part two. I, I'm really kind of. I'm not sure how why. It's tripped up so many people. Um, like I would have expected, you know, my incremental bit to be you know, giving me like 900, maybe 900 rank. So I'm not sure what people are doing. That's like so slow for part two. Okay. So yeah, this, this has finished with Python. It takes uh, 47.5 seconds for both part one and part two, but part one's negligible. And with PyPy, which is, th this is an alias for, for, you know, doing exactly this, except for replace it with PyPy three. It takes um, 1.31 seconds. So, yeah, that's a pretty big speed up. So it's a four times speed up with with PyPy. So, Epsilon, welcome. Who is Epsilon? Are you in our leaderboard or I don't actually know. Welcome in to chat. Yeah, okay. I don't know. I'm not sure what I think about this. It was it wasn't terrible, but it was still it, it's still not enough. It's still not good enough. Um uh on my part, I have to I have to do better. Yeah, so so Josh was pointing out the fact that this is O of n, right? So maybe I should spend some time optimizing this and and getting rid of like using a more efficient data structure for this. Um, let's maybe instead of a list here, use a tuple and then here, if there, oh my gosh, I can't even type anymore. Um, equals i and then we'll keep around only the last two things here which will be spoken's s at negative one and s dang it Um, yeah, I mean, at this point, I'm not, I'm not solving. I've already solved. So JB31842, yeah, I'm accepting random hints from the, from the peanut gallery. Um, oh, clearly this is wrong.
Oh, oh, I'm just, I'm just bad at coding. There we go. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, maintaining the list will be O of n squared, so that's probably, um, probably the problem. Oh yeah, I guess you don't ever have, because it's always the previous one, right? Like this is always going to be i minus 1. Wow, that makes so much sense. And then, let's just time that real quick. And then here, we can always just do spoken s equals i. Here. If um, focus dot get prev, what am I doing? Basically, so this is the case where it's zero. So if the previous one was not, well, it'll always be in spokens. How do we detect if it's been spoken only one time? I'm not seeing this. Uh, yeah, that's kind of kind of annoying to, to track that, right? Because then you'd have to like you'd have to wait until after the next iteration of the loop to set your previous set. That seems worse. I don't know. This makes sense to me. I'm just gonna keep it. Um, I, I, I honestly don't care about optimizing this anymore, to be perfectly honest, because it's like good enough. Bad, but <laughs> who cares? It runs. It runs in enough. It run. It has an efficient enough runtime that uh, I got it the answer right. Okay, let's see. Uh, I think that's about it. Okay, so so JB31842 says his runs in 15 seconds, and he's doing a much more efficient way of doing this. He's only storing the previous prior. Yeah, I don't know. The the, the nice thing about this approach and also the the honestly the approach that I used with the list was almost as efficient as this tuple approach. The cognitive load is like zero. Um, which is something that is really, really useful for these if you're trying to go for speed. So like, you know, if I went back to the list version and, and you know, um, right, like this is still, this is still like within the order of 15 or 11 sec, 11 and a, a few hundred milliseconds. Um, In fact, it's faster. <laughs> it almost makes sense that it's faster because amortized like the that the um, the the cost of maintaining the list isn't that bad. You know, you only have to resize every two to the every like every multiple of two effectively, which is so. Um, So you only have to resize like 24 times um, over the course of running. I actually don't know what, how they're, how they do the, um, the allocation of lists, but it's efficient is all I know. I, I, I do think that the problem with the tuple approach is that it's, it is this, it is just thrashing the allocator because each tuple is an, I mean, it's Python. Of course, everything's a malloc. Like, 
there's no such thing as not malicking anything. Um, so I, I think that's the issue. I, I would say one thing that could work is if I like implement a circular queue or something like that. Um, yeah. So the problem, the problem uh, with deleting stuff from the front is you end up the the maintenance cost of maintaining the list is actually higher because it's removing an element from the front of a list is I'm not sure how Python implements it, but I'm pretty sure it's O of n. So that would make this O of n squared rather than O of n and then like some logarithmic or amortized linear constant for maintaining the 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 dynamically sized array. I remember something from algorithms that, that maintaining a dyna uh, dynamically sized array is is basically like trivial um, or like no more cost than maintaining a normally sized array. It like it's like two n versus n. Yeah, so I amortized O of one for the maintenance. So you know, inserting n things into the list is O of n. It's like two n, but you know, who cares, right? Yeah, I, I'm actually a little bit surprised about why this is this is how it is. But um, maybe maybe what I could do is implement this as like a <clears throat> circular buffer. All right. Um, thank you for um, hopping on, Joshua. It's it's great to uh, great to get to talk to you live, and um, yeah, I'm I'm excited to watch your stream as well. Obviously, uh, I, I definitely I always enjoy watching it. Gives me some hints of like what I need to improve on myself, and it also it also helps me uh, put myself in 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 my place, you know, as far as. Um, uh, how how poorly I'm doing. So um, I don't know. It, today wasn't as bad as I could have been, but it, it was. It was part one was a little bit disappointing. So alrighty, thank you, Joshua. Thank you, JB thirty one eighty four two. I don't know too many numbers there. Thank you for joining. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, please give it a thumbs up, go and follow, uh, go and subscribe to my channel and also go check out Joshua's channel. I'll link it in the description and, uh, come over and <laughs> come over and follow me on Twitch, uh, where I will be streaming again tomorrow night for what day 16. So see you all later.